Hi everyone, thank you for watching. Um, as you can see, or maybe hear, um, I'm kind of getting over something which I, I think was the flu, so if I cough or hack up stuff during this conversation, I am sorry. Uh, I can't really control that too much, but I do have a handy dandy ginger ale here and water if I need it, so uh, let's get started. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, sort of a combination of things that actually are perturbing me and bothering me a little bit. And I haven't kept up with this entirely, but uh, I wanted to carve out my lane as far as the presidential race goes um, coming up in 2020. And for me, uh, I my number one is Bernie. Um, my number two is Tulsi Gabbard. My number three I guess if I had to pick is Warren. Um, but today I want to talk about specifically what's happening in Puerto Rico with Ricky Renuncia, um, Aoda, or whatever you want to call it, um, and Ricky Rossello, and well, the governor, and I'm sure you've heard the offensive tweets and all of that, and I want to talk about right now the three presidential candidates that have gone, gone there so far, and that is um, Julian Castro, that is Marianne Williamson, and Tulsi Gabbard. Now, I specifically want to talk about Tulsi Gabbard. Why do I want to specifically talk about Tulsi Gabbard? Well, <clears throat> I have a major concern. Um, and it's a, a, a concern of people that are critical of her that are, I guess, on the worn side of the spectrum, um, where they call her a little bit of a political opportunist in the fact that uh, she chose to step down from the DNC to endorse Sanders. She chose to go march at Standing Rock instead of doing something out, else or pro protest at Standing Rock. I, I don't know about all that. But this is what I want to talk about. Um, and let me share my screen so you can see a little bit what I'm talking about. Um, okay. I think that's here. Okay. Okay. So here you'll see this is a New York Times article. It's titled Puerto Rico. Protests, demonstrators demand the governor's re resignation. Okay. <clears throat> um, in general, these protests have been going on a, a little over a week now. Um, <clears throat> and basically, they started because of a series of scandalous text messages. Um, and oh, reading here, it says protests against Mr. Mosello. Rossello began more than a week ago after the publication of 889 pages of a leaked, leaked group chat between the governor and his closest aides. Besides being offensive, the messages revealed a cozy relationship between the governor and former staff members who now represent special interests. So the crude messages were the final straw for Puerto Ricans who have suffered for years because of economic austerity measures and the dev devastation of Hurricane Maria. Okay, let's focus on that last sentence here. The crude messages were the final straw for Puerto Ricans who have suffered for years because of economic austerity measures and the dev devastation of Hurricane Maria. So if you don't understand what that is, that's fine. I'll try to explain it to you as best as I understand. <coughs> austerity measures are basically economic, economic sanctions that cripple Puerto Rico, and they are crippling Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico currently, I mean, as you can see, it hasn't um, been restored since Maria. Um, now, in 2016, there was an important bill called the PROMESA Act, um, and I can't exactly summarize it for you, but I will let uh, Molly Crabapple summarize it for you. Um, okay, so if you don't know who Molly Crabapple is, let me see if I can just 
She's an artist, author of Drawing Blood, and co-author of Brothers of the Gun. She's a leftist, in other words. Um, so this is her saying, Tulsi Gabbard voted for Promesa, which established the neocolonial neo-colonial fiscal control board that wrecks the island with austerity and that Puerto Rican protesters are fighting against. P.S. Bernie voted against and denounced Promesa. Um, so I I don't like that she did this, that she voted against this. Um, and I mean, Elizabeth Warren also denounced and voted against Promesa. Um, now, <laughs> it's hard to really completely understand the situation, but there, so this is, um, why Tulsi Gabbard voted against the Promesa Act. I'll try to read this whole thing. Um, but basically, she said, make no mistake, uh, I'm gonna quote for you and just read it for you. Make, make no mistake, the Promesa Act is not a perfect bill. Unfortunately, the alternative to passing the Promesa Act is worse. If Congress does nothing, <clears throat> if Congress does nothing, Puerto Rico's future will be placed in the hands of a federal judge negotiating with expensive lawyers representing hedge funds and creditors. Puerto Rico teeters on the brink of economic and humanitarian disaster. Puerto Rico's unemployment rate is more than double the national average and the child poverty rate is close to 60%. The median household income hovers around 19,000 a year compared to 51,000 in the United States. More than 100 schools and hospitals have closed due to lack of funding. And since 2008, foreclosures have increased by nearly 90%. The problems facing Puerto Rico today are, are a result of bad decisions made by leaders in Puerto Rico, in Washington, DC, and Wall Street, not the actions of the Puerto Rican people. It breaks my heart to see how families in Puerto Rico are suffering as a result. Kids who can't go to school, teachers out of work, law enforcement sidelined, and sick people with no access to health care as more hospitals close their doors. <coughs> <coughs> it is because of this humanitarian and economic emergency that I voted for this bill. At this hour, there is no better alternative for the people of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico has been fighting for more than a year to find a workable solution to its financial crisis. This compromise bill takes the first step forward toward restructuring 100% of Puerto Rico's debt and, settling it on, and setting it on a path toward recovery. However, the problems that exist in this legislation and the plight of the Puerto Rican people cannot be ignored. I will work with my colleagues and we, as we move toward the toward addressing the following issues, among others. Reinstate the federal minimum wage requirements in Puerto Rico. Require companies operating in Puerto Rico res to respect the same labor protections, including overtime requirements that exist in the rest of the U.S. Address Puerto Rico's health care crisis and ensure P Puerto Ricans are treated fairly under Medicare and Medicaid provide economic support to help Puerto Rico's ec economy get moving again and drive investment to the island. Reduce sky high energy prices by supporting their capacity expansion and move toward renewable energy sources. <coughs> so, I genuinely don't really understand um, if she had so many office, uh, so many, concerns with the bill, why she voted for it. Um, it, it. It sounds like she thought it was the best option, but it also sounds like it, she thought it wasn't. Um, uh, 
I, I, I don't know. Um, it's, I guess I wish you would have introduced some type of amendment or something where it didn't make her look this bad. Because to me, her going to Puerto Rico in respect of this bill and her decision to choose to vote for it basically created the the, the, the things that they were prote they're protesting against currently. Um, it's not really a good look. Uh, it, <coughs> it's really not a good look, and I really, uh, it's really, really bothersome to me, so I'd like to find out exactly what she is trying to do now in the halls of Congress to put forth a bill to make Puerto Rico a state. Um, I don't know if that's left in the power of Congress or not, but if it is, that would be great. Um, I think that she does need to talk about this and there, there does need to be a serious, <coughs> a serious focus on this for the next or at the next presidential debate not that there will be but i hope that there is because this this bill created the conditions that the people there were protesting against um so i guess that's kind of my take i don't like to vote for this i kind of sort of understand why she didn't but i kind of also don't um so I guess I will leave it up to you as to what you uh, decide here and how you feel, but I don't like it. And uh, she's my second choice. Uh, <coughs> but uh, yeah, and I'm gonna go and take care of my voice now. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Bye. <coughs>